Hi everyone, welcome again to my podcast, uh, Curious Business Talks. Today's topic that I'm reading out loud for you so you don't have to is about fingerprint and photo identification to go to the gym? Question mark. But before we start, I really want to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed these episodes and also like the video. And if you think someone would like to listen to these kind of topics, feel free to share them. Let's dive in. How do you feel about this identification process? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your opinions and perspectives. New year, new habits or old habits, but maybe in a new environment. That's how I got to this week article topic. I was looking online for available gyms in the city, Zagreb, Croatia, where I can sign up and restart my workout journey. And yes, again, it is related to user experience. Coincidence? Certainly not. When we, designers, say user experience is all around us, it's truly in one way or another. So I have been to a few different gyms around the city with and without a multi-sport card. That is a card for employees to visit a network of recreational centers including gyms, sports clubs and even wellness and spa centers. And never bother to check in detail their monthly memberships or the way they issue their contracts. Recently, I started researching the topic before getting into a year-long commitment by signing in a contract. So one gym in particular stood out the most. I knew it had a lot of traffic because of its marketing of being 24-7 gym with multiple locations around the city. Awesome, right? That value proposition is enough as it is to stand down from the competition. And I'm talking about the multiple locations, not the 24-7 element. Because for me, as a freelancer, potential user, the time doesn't seem as impressive as the flexibility to explore different locations of the gym's chain. Okay, where is the catch, Nicoletta? Well, here we are, at the user journey, very excited and ready to apply and sign up for the contract to pay a monthly membership. But then, at the front of their reception desk, I caught myself second-guessing. I connected the dots and thought, wait a minute, they have gyms all around the city, members can visit the gym 24-7 and the price is considerably lower than any other gym in the city, 26.50 euros and other gyms offer between 39.80 until 49 approximately. Why? Why and how come they are allowed to have so many advantages and on top of that the lowest price on the marketplace? Hmm. Quote, monopoly definition. A market structure characterized by a single seller selling a unique product in the market. In a monopoly market, the seller faces no competition as he is the sole seller of goods with no close substitute. End of quote. And then I saw the two-door entrance, the fingerprint identification, contract printed out and put in front of the reception desk, camera were visible too. And when my friend told me they should take my photo and my fingerprint when they are supposed to give me the membership card, I was like, what? Why? Why do you need so much personal information to enter the gym? Can I trust this company with having my likeness in such a way? Then the research started naturally in more detail-orientated way from the perspective of a user and UX designer. I began to recall when and where was the last time I provided such sensitive information. Was anyone else giving it away easily as to the gym? The last time giving my fingerprint and having my photo taken was when I was renewing my passport. And the time before when I was creating my ID card. Not sure if it was required for my driving license. I also asked on my Instagram story my followers about when was the last time they provided such information and to whom. The answers were government institution for issuing personal identification documents, USA airport at the first entry into the country. No wonder since this personal information is classified as special category data under the GDPR and the biggest risk is for the data controller, in this case the gym. 
Going a stage further, explicit consent requires you to inform the data subject exactly how their data will be processed by the activity, who runs the system, internal or third-party supplier, how the data will be stored, how long you intend to keep it for, and what the inherent risks are, if any, to this activity. In other words, if the data is breached, what are the implications for the individual? Also, are you able to demonstrate this in the most appropriate processing activity? Could it have been achieved by the activity of lesser risk? Lots of questions and situations to consider as well. Smudged fingerprints, hygiene, people who use their hands and fingers in crafts, people with long and artificial nails, handling sensitive information without reassuring of security, stamp or certificate legal authorities approve of this practice, other options to prevent fraud and still have this unique value proposition for the users, how trustworthy is the gem chain, what is their reputation in handling other customer and user experiences, how do other competitors do it, the lowest price in exchange for data, between 48 until 81% cheaper memberships. What are the alternatives to keeping the 24-7 policy but also making sure that is not abused? 1. Mobile-based access system, NFC, near-field communication, device next to the door maybe, codes connected to their mobile app and user's account, the code generator, third party, as a one-time password, second, Gated access systems, turn style, tailgating detection solutions. Option number three, other solutions. Key fob access system, barcode readers, membership card, key card door access system. Fourth option, hybrid door access system. Hybrid doors access systems are a combination of a traditional physical security barrier, such as a gate with a cloud-based entry control system. Such systems use gyms that require the use of different credential options, such as key fobs and key cards. All in all, there are other solutions to prevent the prohibited entry of unauthorized members. And if you, as a business owner, decide to proceed and use this method for identification, make sure to provide reassurance to the users that their privacy is being protected and respected. Thank you for listening and reading, guys. Uh, consider giving me a follow and subscribing on whichever platform you are hearing my voice right now. Your comments and feedback really keep me motivated to record more episodes. And uh, something really interesting is coming soon, so stay tuned. This week I'm traveling to London and... Um, I don't know when this episode will be posted, but I'm quite excited because um, I will experience new culture and um, I'm really curious to see what user experiences and um, situations I will encounter while I'm there. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. I uh, appreciate your support and uh, let me know in the comments, would you give your fingerprints to a gym? And Stay healthy, stay well, and have a nice week. Bye!